Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is April and today I'm doing another wedding dress transformation. This dress was actually given to me for free by Kim from Shirt Happens Now. They're no longer in business, but they are the ones that came up with the designs and um, printed out the t-shirts that I'm selling. So thank you to Kim for this dress and for the awesome t-shirts. And thank you to everyone here for purchasing one and making today's video possible. So something really cool I wanted to share is that Kim, she used to work at a bridal shop. So um, I think, I believe their shop was called Something Old, Something Something new and she found out about what I did which is why she wanted to give me these dresses to see what I can do with them so I hope you're watching this Kim and I hope the rest of you guys enjoy this video let's get started here is the before dress we have a ruffled collar rows of lace ribbon sewn down the bodice the sleeves are poofy sleeves with a wide ruffle cuff at the end. The skirt layer on top is chiffon and it has a small chain in the back and flowers along the hem that are falling off. And the back side has a zipper starting from the neck and a bow at the waist. The only thing I don't really like about this dress is the neckline. So let's get seam ripping and see what we can do. I first removed all the lace from the bodice and separated the dress apart to make the redesigning process a lot easier. While doing so, pay attention to how the dress was made. That way you have an idea on how to sew it back together. Chiffon and lace are very delicate materials to seam rip and even though you're careful, you will end up with some tears in the fabric. I just want to make sure you understand that the material won't be in the same condition as it used to be, especially if you're planning to wear this on your special day and want a super brand new looking dress. Also, using an old wedding dress means that there will be some stains on it already. The pinstripe stitching is its own layer on top of the chiffon bodice, so I removed it so I can work with the layer underneath. The one thing I didn't like about this dress is the neckline, so I cut the front in half and will be redesigning it to be a plunging v-neck. Inside the sleeve, there's a layer of very soft tulle, and they also lined some of the chiffon bodice pieces with tulle to give it more body. So I purchased some tulle from the fabric store and used it to line my bodice so I can accurately fit the darts on my dress. I quickly hand sewed the tulle to the chiffon pieces and draped my new design on my dress form. With the tool layer facing right sides together, I sewed the bodice along the center front. Flip the pieces over and you can top stitch the center front down so that the seam lays flat and hand baste the tool to the chiffon along all the sides so that they act as one piece. Now I can sew the darts closed, including the tool layer that we attach to it. For the back chiffon bodice, I'm keeping the high neck, but creating an opening in the back that will look like this. And just like the front side, I lined the back with some tulle and sewed the back neckline right sides together. I could have also sewed the center back right sides together as well in this moment, but I wasn't sure where I was going with the design, so I left it for later. I'm using a pinking blade on my rotary cutter because the chiffon fabric unravels a lot, so the pinking blade helps slow that down. 
flip the back bodice so that the raw edges are on the inside. And now we can attach the front and back together along the shoulder and side seams. Originally, the dress was sewn with a regular right side together seam, but I sewed it using a French seam just to secure it even more. Moving on to the sleeves, I removed the giant cuff and sewed the sleeves back into the armholes. Now to incorporate the stripe stitching back into the dress, I pieced it together so that the stripes are going horizontal and we'll be sewing it as the waistband. Using some additional chiffon fabric I purchased, I cut a lining layer for the waistband. I also faced the stripe pieces with tulle to give them more body and then sewed both waistbands at the side seams. Before attaching the waistband, I went back and sewed the center back together. And this is a part that I mentioned earlier that I didn't do yet because I was still figuring things out. So to do it now, I now have to sandwich everything inside so that I can face it right side together and sew that seam closed. Next, face the stripe waistband right sides together on top of the bodice and face the lining waistband underneath on the wrong side of the bodice and sew all three layers together. Moving on to the chiffon skirt, I gathered it just enough to fit my waist and then sewed it right sides together to the bottom of the stripe waistband only. Then you can fold and press the lining waistband seam allowance underneath so that it extends 1 8 below the front waistband and then sew it down using the stitch in a ditch method. Stitch in a ditch is where I'm sewing the bottom seam by stitching through the crack of the seam on top. This is why we need that under waistband to stick out 1 8 below the waistband on top so that it gets caught when you sew. The closure for the chiffon skirt and waistband in the back had me super confused because I didn't know how this would attach to the dress that was going underneath. So I decided to keep the two dresses separately. So to close up the back of the chiffon dress, I just created two straps that will tie a bow into the back. Then I tuck the straps into the waistband and top stitch it down. The back neckline actually ended up being too short and didn't reach by almost 2 inches so I thought I could just sew these frog button loops to help extend it but then realized I could also just use the leftover lace pieces to add a few more inches to the back and it worked out wonderfully. Just lay them in place and top stitch it down. And then to close up the back, I sewed a snap button to the lace. Using the same lace piece that was on the waist of the original dress, I top stitched it back on over the waistband. And then instead of using the original wide cuffs, I created smaller ones to finish the sleeves. I also sewed on some snap buttons to hold the cuffs together.
To finish out the chiffon skirt, the length was already perfect on me, so all I did was went back and sewed the flower trim back on all the way around. And now we can move on to the dress that goes underneath. First, I'll be reshaping the bodice into a sweetheart neckline. After making the sweetheart shape, I split the bodice and used the other side to drape the side front of the bodice. For the back side of the bodice, I just lined it up at the side seam and trimmed the back side lower. Now you should have two sweetheart bodice layers and can sew all the pieces together. I purchased some white cording to use as straps and sandwiched them inside and sewed the two bodices along the top. For the skirt, it had a layer of stiff tulle on top, which I'm not going to include because I want a soft flowy look, so I removed that and then took in the skirt by a couple inches to fit me. Next, sew the bodice and skirt together at the waist. Lastly, instead of using the metal zipper that came with the dress, I purchased an invisible zipper and sewed it into the center back. Then tuck the top of the zipper tape underneath the seam allowance and tack it down. And I'm finished! Here is the before and after. I love a long sleeve dress, but the before dress was just too covered up for my taste. So I'm happy I was able to keep the same silhouette and only altered the bodice for a more modern look. My favorite part about the design I came up with is that you could wear the two dresses separately. The chiffon dress by itself looks like it could be a nightgown or a robe, and the dress underneath could actually be a reception dress if you're thinking of wearing two different dresses on your special day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more DIY fashion. And if you're interested in purchasing a t-shirt, you can check out the link down in my description box. See you guys next time. Bye!